All right, so we are back at it again in another Dragon Ball Super Card Game video. This one is going to be the top 16 for the ARG event that we just had. I think this was the Summer in Invitational, I do believe. We had a 241, 244, around that sort of uh, uh, number. And this is the first one that we've had, uh, at least a major event, other than like prelims and things like that. Um, that has the new anniversary box set and as well as the new uh, Warm Monster Arts set. A lot of things happened, a lot of people attended, or at least people of uh, like pillars of the community, content creators, uh, really big names out there. And I think uh, there was a lot of different things that t sort of happened, a lot of different decks that we've seen. I'm very happy to see the many different decks that we uh, that we had. Um, kind of unfortunate there were so many uh, victory strike decks that had to be dealt with, but uh, you know, the, the meta is shifting and, and is ha this is the first representation of that. Definitely ha I have to shout out a lot of different people, well not a lot of different people, a few different people, and then and as we can see here, uh, did take the win versus Shenron Gogeta. He was playing uh, Broly Hana Mastery, we'll take a look at both of them, and as well as shout out to Joey, uh, I think he placed third in top top four, uh, placed uh, obviously top 16 in uh, and Swiss, I'm very happy for him. Very, very, very happy overall uh, for that. He did place uh, Kid Goku that we'll take a look at. His his list is a little bit weird, but I know for a fact he's going to make a video talking all about it. <laughs> and of course, we have all of this, all of these uh, deck lists here. The original deck list uh, that we can go through if we want to, uh, but I do want to give a shout out to DBS decks and as well as I think the Dirty City Gym uh, put out all of these. I was going to as soon as the the list was out. Um, and pull an Eggman uh, like that, like the uh, getting all the information, but looks like these are already out, so I'm, I'm very happy to see that. So shout out to them, and as well as DBS Dex, uh, and as well as uh, Scott Slater. A lot of lot of shout outs, because he, he did ta uh, take the time to put all those lists together, and as well as all the data that we're going to take a look at in a second. If we scroll through here, uh, well one, this is a summer invitational, but in September. So I, I guess we're having a, a summer Invitational in September, pretty cool. And now we have uh, some dominance here and there. Uh, dominance as far as the uh, Dragon Ball, 76%. I'm not sure if this is too correct, as I don't know if half the decks here uh, had Dragon Ball, but I, I, I'm I'm thinking so because we we had Danny, Dehan, etc. playing like a uh, Trader Dende. We had uh, I believe like I don't I don't know if I had four star ball. Um, I guess it counts as a four star ball. I think there's only a number of uh, skill lists, which we'll take a look at going through all, all, every single one of the decks as well. Um, uh, temporal, uh, temporal res rescue trunks, a lot of different black leaders using that, and then a lot of different things or cards that I'd say that we already, we already, uh, privy to as far as crisis crusher time magic flying nimbus even objection so i think i think we're we're gonna see some of these senran gogeta decks and see that mutaito or murtaito however you want to pronounce it definitely making and showing a lot of different yellow decks and probably as we already know th from a lot of different formats uh, yellow is one of those strongest if ne if not the strongest meta slash format color um, and it's it's showing every single set like every single set we've had a yellow meta etc but as before I go through every single one of the decks and the breakdown uh, for the Excel sheet that Scott put out let me know in the comments below are you happy with the results do you think this is diverse are you having fun with the format and the game right now um, for me I, I like the format. It's uh, I think I think this is one of the most skill intensive formats we've had yet. I've said it in previous videos before. As we have more and more card cards added to the pool, uh, we're gonna have more and more skill intensive matches. Yes, we have answers for things. Yes, there are still still things broken like uh, Gogeta Hero Vive, Hatter Mastery slash uh, Path of Greatness. Yeah, that's that's still a thing. But now we have answers. Now we can uh, kind of adapt and, and go through a lot of different things, right? And, and go through a lot of different decks and figure that out. And I, am I happy with it or happy with the game? Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm happy as as much as I can be happy. If that makes sense. Uh, I don't know if I, I'm I'm enjoying. The, I, I think I am enjoying the game as, as much as I can right now, given what I'm, I'm given. And for instance, I just had my prelim. I, I placed third. I got my invite. No big deal there. I, I'm, you know, first place was Janemba. 
uh, from a really really good player. And second second was a great player. Shout out to Justin. I know you're watching, John. I know you're watching. Don't worry. Shouting you guys out. Second place was Hide and Mastery. I play skill list Yellow Kid Goku. It's all good. If you want that list, let me know in the in the comments below. But let me know. Let me know. Definitely. And of course, of course, subscribe if you're new. I know a lot of you are clicking um, when you're not subscribed. Here is the first place deck, uh, Mr. Anthony Hernandez. The finals was best of five. I caught most of it, but I know for a fact that Anthony did pull out the win. Uh, I think three to one. I want to say. And um, this is. A good build in the way of understanding how to adapt to your deck I don't know if that makes sense but I'm sure he's going to make a video and hopefully uh, it would make more sense and the reason why I say this is because um, this deck allows for a, a lot of different things and I, I know I know Joel might be watching this and he's a he's a very uh, a very big supporter of Hide and Mastery, Path to Greatness, and as well as the Broly leader instead of Chilai or whatever else kind of leader that you might use. Because he does have access to Cobalt Less F4, he does have access to the swap engine, and as well as uh, Gine here to support uh, as a swap target for another aggro target, uh, swinging for 15k, and as well as uh, putting three three cards to the to the drop uh, to get that that sparking for Path to Greatness over here. You have successor help that switch uh, that searches out both adoptive father and as well as dependable dynasty goku for again that aggro option playing four ofs and, and and being able to do that is really good and then of course three mutahitos in the main which is cray cray um interesting choice of doing the full surveillance jacko at three and then uh one shigesh so he doesn't play planet there's no reason for him to play uh planet if well let me put that up. There's no reason to play the uh, two cost Spear Hearted Goku the super combo instead of Jacko if he doesn't play um, uh, the planet or any kind of searcher or tutor for it. So this one I think is a solid build as far as uh, going for consistency. Not too much as far as uh, tech choices. I think this is exactly what you need to do. Time Magic is there uh, for the Shenron Gogeta matchup. I'm, I'm very certain that he knew all about it at that point and was well aware of the possibility of that uh, versus Flying Nimbus. I don't think Flying Nimbus is... Uh, I, I, well, let me let me put it this way. I think Flying Nimbus, Flying Nimbus is good with Kid Goku out and about, filling up a board and attacking a lot of times, but versus a lot of other decks, Time Magic is perfectly fine. And then we have the King Piccolo tech in the side. I love it. Um, with the uh, King Piccolo and as well as the Master Shen and Roshi, it gives you another 20k double striking target um, that you can go ahead and restand with Leader Effect, obviously. And if you're going for game with the Mira uh, and two Bad Ring in the in the side, uh, it's just it's just a free target. For those who don't know, you KO ba basically you place these guys in drop because these the this one and Mutaito, which this one's just gonna go to the drop, uh, are the targets for uh, King Piccolo. You remove two. World tournament in any area, especially if they're gonna, you're going against a, a another World Martial Arts tournament deck or something that doesn't have barrier, because I think the, this does choose. Um, but because you're choosing yourself, I'm pretty sure those proc off. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody, but I'm pretty sure these are yours. Uh, it can't be chosen by the opponent's skills. That's what barrier says. So very cool as as some additional tech in the side. Probably another option to to kind of put in and then go for another uh, sort of win con or something that's not expected. So that's cool. My next killing zone for the matchup or for the mirror match or anything else that plays uh, something like pre uh, preemptive strike or something like that. Uh, no escape Goku was a really good tech choice because again I said this in a previous video. You should be having that in the side with the uh, the anniversary box Goku uh, going into UI and it that's just it just shuts down that that deck uh, pretty well. And time time Kronoa, time control Kronoa, uh in the side instead of the main. So that's interesting. Uh, Toki Toki. And then uh, Tian, which is understandable, and then uh, Bardock for the Broly matchup. So overall, very solid deck. I'm very glad he had he had the win. Um, not much else to say. You know, he's he's killing it. He's an absolute monster. Uh, you know, a lot of people might not might agree with his opinions. I don't even agree with his opinions sometimes. But you know, you gotta respect um, a, a good player when you see it. Anyway, moving on. I think Graham was the second place. Correct me if I'm wrong. But this was the Shenron Gogeta build that everybody was talking about uh i completely agree you know this is something i just i didn't talk about i'm not going to take credit for anything like that 
but I'm going to agree right now that Shenron Gogeta is still a good deck. Like you, you have to realize that you know this 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 sort of deck was only bad because of aggro and um, uh, the the multiple attacks or actions per turn that other decks previously in this in this previous format um, put this back or put this in in, in the, on the back burner basically. Three cents of being in the in the main is interesting, but probably there for a reason, just so you can keep the ratios um, exactly where it needs to be. One Super Dragon Ball instead of one Star Ball in a Super Super Dragon Ball is kind of risky, even then, because you know turn three going second, um, it, it might it might you know, you know passing to someone tapped out and then um, uh, them going off on a turn three can it, it, it's a very possible thing to to do. Um, but overall, you know, pretty solid and. You know, uh, yeah, yes, it's the Shenron Gogeta. Like, I think this is cool in the way of, uh, you know, adding in the in the yellow. And I know now that I think about it, Chuck is gonna say like, "Oh, you thought it was bad?" No, I don't think it's. I don't think it was bad. I think it was bad for the previous format. <laughs> but <laughs> that's really about it. And I think uh, now that it has a showing, um, and I'm I'm glad uh, to see it, and now more more people are gonna play it. But Either way, neither here nor there. Two Bower Bursts is interesting. Instead of having a three or four, I guess you don't really need too many uh, of them. You need more blue in order to objection turn two and get where you need to be. Um, and this, since it is a dice roll format right now, and if, as more, more, more and more people are saying that, I'm inclined to agree that because uh, when you go first, you have the advantage in a lot of different things and a lot of different matchups. Going second is okay. I think for a Broly player, going second is is okay. Yellow Broly, that is. Um, and even for Green Broly, I, th I think so. But uh, we didn't really have too much of a good performance for Green Broly. And that is because of uh, the decks like Hide and Mastery and as well as Janemba and etc. Uh, that are really pushing that back. And with Shenron Gogeta, Green Broly kind of regulates Shenron Gogeta. So as we move on, we might see more Green Broly adapt to this. But in the current form that green really is as in green yellow it is there's not very much to change from that if you're going to look for that chain if you're going to be playing the yellow package so people already know that deck and that's why it's so easy to beat or not easy to beat but more or less difficult to beat or less difficult to uh overcome than it was when it came out it won two events as soon as it came out and uh, ever since then, it hasn't been performing as good as well as it used to. So, <sighs> anyway, we have uh, Sensu Bean, Shenron. It's very typical three Gogeta, very typical Sh Shenron Gogeta, or the Ultimate Fusion for removal. Purunga, I love me some Purunga, so I love this. Really disrupts uh, things like Lord Slug, uh, where you can choose something that ha doesn't have barrier and get rid of their wings and really everything else that they set up. Uh, Kid Goku, where you can just get rid of into. Uh, I don't know, like the the Kid Goku, and if you have a Crisis Crusher on board, you can go ahead and just remove it from there because he has it to the side. Hide and Mastery builds, you can just go ahead and remove the Shen, uh, the the uh, Master Shen and Roshi, which you if you saw the stream that happened many times, uh, but it wasn't enough. I think he was focusing, and this is nothing to get against him. You know, he's in the seat, I'm not, uh, but I think it was more focusing on trying to remove his field in order to get rid of the Hide and Mastery uh, threat, and then. Uh, go for game with Sh Sh uh, Hero Revive, but because the way that swap works and the options that Anthony has, or at least any Ye Yellow Broly deck has, uh, it's hard to keep that up and then get to your win con at the same time. So it it's really difficult for that, and I think uh, I think he made a good showing with this deck and, and overall. Anyway, moving on. So striving to be the best, really good tech choice. Uh, if you're looking for, uh, you know, going against that swap, which it doesn't seem like it helped too much if you don't see it. And then we have uh, Kid Goku, of course, and a couple other decks that really uh, hurt against that. Uh, the new Kai is still really good, really annoying, but it's only for one turn. If they can't remove the striving to be the best, they just simply can't attack. So there you go. Battery Lingzer, uh, I think he has two in the main, one in the side, so maybe for Janemba. Uh, Flying Nimbus makes sense. Uh, maybe, I don't know, I don't know if two is something I really agree with, but... Because you're, you're just not good on yellow in the main. I, I don't know, that's just, eh. One Mutaito, so okay. At least he's, uh, that, that was considered, so... I don't know what that was. <laughs> so, at least that's considered. Midas Kill Zone makes sense. But at the same time, maybe the only... 
The only target for that is going to be, um, you know, newfound power Perunga and as well as at all costs. Those are really biggest targets. And, and I guess the four drop Goji, uh, Shenron. So there you go. Then we have Dangerous Journey Boma. Uh, cool. And then one more Dragon Radar. Kronoa, an extra one. Uh, made sense to do that. And then one Demigra as an alternative win con. Great showing from both. I love this game. All right, then we have Joey, Mr. Third Place. Amazing. Uh, so this this deck is interesting. Okay, that that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> I'm not going to take away from anything of his his uh, his video upcoming. I'm sure he's going to talk about it. Um, but I will say that because it's interesting, there's a lot of different choices that I personally wouldn't make, but it does seem like it's working. Now, when I say that is because he has only has three, four star ball. My assumption is that he's always going to have either all of them in hand or at least one in hand in order to, uh, in order to use a leader effect in order to use it on his vanillas. The other part of it is that the more four star balls you have, um, the less, I guess, options you would have to play another card. So yes, you do thin out your deck to, to uh, to, to, to use your uh, Kid Goku effect, but at the same time, if you're not using it uh, on your vanillas, they're pretty much not as useful other than the leader effect. So I can kind of see that. The other thing is that this is more, it seems like a more aggressive build than others. I like an aggressive Kid Goku deck. I'm glad that Joey did it as well, or at least had that mindset. He has uh, a, a, f a number of targets for both Go uh, her Vegeta and as well as Tien Shinhan for training buddy. No dimension support, so I can understand that. The only overrun that he does have is going to be the Dimension Mana Shifu, the Mass Saiyan in the side, and then probably my favorite overrun card right now, the Fu, uh, Fu, the Dark Banisher. And this has done work. I've included one in my main, and uh, I I really like it when it does go off. It is still expensive at four and eight overrealm, uh, or eight in the drop. And if you have more overrealm targets in your in your uh, in your deck, it's not as useful. So that's something that I'm considering to take out. Not so much of this, but other overrealm targets, so that way it's not clogged up. And the two mass in is probably for uh, the mirror itself. And then uh, any other tech options. So Wishmaker Dende is an interesting one. Uh, I don't know if it says deck or drop. Let's see. Let me see. So it says from the deck. So the only the only issue I have that with this is because it only says from your deck and not from deck and drop. But I guess the one drop uh, Goku is just another way to get it from the drop area. And he doesn't really play too much over realm, so it, it all kind of makes sense. Uh, and again, I don't really want to take away from this. Um, that's really the, the only option, or only things I, I really wanted to talk about. The Source of Power Goku for two swings and 20k, and the Mutaito for uh, the, uh, again, Hina Mastery and other Gogeta matchups, that type of thing. Good job on him. Now we have Robert Russo, another familiar name from other events. Again, keeping it stacked. This man has the Victory Strike and a, as well as a bunch of other stuff. So if you notice that Anthony. Or uh, yeah, Anthony did not play the Sun Goten and hit in his deck, uh, and that's more of a defensive type of thing. He subbed it out most likely for the swap engine and have more attacks uh, throughout the game. And meanwhile, uh, a lot of people like to protect the Shen Roshi, um, but at the same time, I think it is easy to protect the Shen and Roshi because they have barrier and because they're 6K. So if something is swinging at it at uh, 10K. Uh, you can just combo a 5k out and you'd be fine. And if your belt, your, your deck is full of 5ks, then you should be fine in general uh, to do that. And then overall, two Shigesh, uh, pretty cool. The King Piccolo in the main, that tech, one Fearless Assault Krillin, I would probably take that out. Uh, I mean, I, I, maybe it's clutch sometime, some way or another. Two Minus Killing Zone in the main, wow, okay. And then uh, two Bad Ring Laser, makes sense. Um, and then play by play pro in the side, I guess, for more draw because of the Master Roshi and Shen. Uh, really focusing on that. Uh, one Crisis Crusher, I don't think they have, yeah, they don't have it in the, in the main. So one is kind of uh, effy. Haruharu in the side with the Mighty Skelly Zone in the main makes sense. Tien in the side. Trunks Power Over Seeking Time for the Victory Strike. And as well as Fu, the Dark Banisher for four swings. And they have to warp every single time they use a skill. Overall, pretty cool deck. Uh, um, I am interested in hearing his thoughts on this. If you're watching, definitely let me know. Now we have a Lord Slug. Shout out to the Lord Slug and Mr. Tommy. Uh, now this is cool because uh, when I saw the Dark Banisher in this deck, this is dope. Because now you're looking at uh, a, a turn three Lord Slug and then in turn 
for Dark Banisher. And with Anguilla swinging many times, your leader dropping cards, and then as well as uh, evolving whenever you can, that is, because you're going to be tapped out this four, uh, for the dark, uh, the, the Titan Ambition Lord Slug, you should be good to go. The other thing about this is that, yes, a lot of decks generate a lot of hand advantage, which is why Lord Slug uh, at, a, at a top tier level is difficult to pilot as well as the top, or at least to do well in. I think he did well uh, because a lot of people, if you look through the sideboard and as well as the main for these other decks, uh, aren't really concerned with Tau and as well as um, uh, just hand and control in general. So I think that kind of does pretty well um, when it when it comes down to choosing your deck and as well as uh, just just understanding what you what you need to do. I think the the father son Kamehameha is pretty cool. Uh, sacrifice and shocking death ball for a lot of different options for self awakening and removal. Assimilate to search out your Namekian over here. Uh, I still don't agree with that. I think Paragus is still amazing, but Hey, he's, he's doing well with it. And then four double impact Krillin to kill off literally everything. Uh, that's two costs or less, including Tao. Uh, and then we have another Father the Sun for the Broly, I'm guessing. Dark Power for more drop. Uh, Cronoa for any yellow leaders. Um, uh, Tao for any mirror matches. Bar Bardock for Broly and then Mass Saiyan for Kid Goku. I love Lord Slug and I'm glad that he did well with it. So we have Samuel Martinez. Oh, okay. It's not really, I'm not, uh, as we load here. I'm pretty sure this is a Hunter Mastery Victory Strike deck, uh, which it is. Okay, cool, another one. Sweet, I guess. Uh, doing doing, doing with the King Piccolo tech. People are loving that card, and it's probably gonna be getting really expensive uh, as it has limited pool, or limited options, and it's gonna be a really good, really good card just in general, just to tech in for anything World of Martial Arts. Um, I think as I double check this, I want to make sure that this doesn't ignore barrier. Okay, four more energy, choose two world tournament cards. Uh, so it says choose, so that's no. So it would be really cool if it says ignore barrier for world tournament. Um, that'd be kind of buzzing because it doesn't have a cost limit. So <laughs> I don't think they would ever do that anyway. Uh, but overall, pretty cool. I don't really agree with the Bardock in the main. Uh, maybe Green Broly, and maybe they just had a really bad experience. And I guess that is a really bad matchup. Uh, so I can understand that and then uh, also it does get rid of high mastery if they somehow survive uh, the onslaught clan Terry mecha Frieza for a world world peace target. So that's interesting um, I mean not really not a bad tech option honestly I don't know what that is for but I guess it is just another tech option just so you can keep your options open Dangerous, dangerous Bulma uh, for the Denemba, another Dragon Radar. Interesting that people are citing that in. Uh, Kronoa makes sense. And then a newfound power for Perunga for the reasons that I told you before. Wish to Perunga probably, if I had to take a guess, is because of uh, the mirror match. So if you had uh, Explorer Bulma on the field, let's say he will piece it out on tap two. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, you paid untapped two, and then you chose the the Explorer Boma, and as well as their Path to Greatness, and you place it at the bottom of the deck. I'm pretty sure that is how it works. No one really plays this card, unfortunately, even though it's kind of busted. Everybody was uh very much on this card and saying, why did they give a, a Chain Zeno? So it says, uh, choose one of your opponents and uh, battle yours and opponents with <laughs> battle cards with equal cost. And then every other battle card uh, that you control, and then okay, all right, that's fine. So basically, your hand, uh, the battle cards, and then uh, just shuffle in a deck and, and then draw five cards. And of course, the other one stays. Hey, I didn't even know a pan was in the top sixteen. Look at that. I don't. I, don't, I, I it's a green probably. I guess I don't know. They're gone. Um, <laughs> Uh, Pan's interesting. Pan's interesting to see in uh, among all these other decks. I guess because he main that three minus Killy zone, which I would do. Like I'm, I, I've said this before. I <laughs> included in my other red decks. Main, maining, maining, maining minus Killy zone is really important. There's no forcing hint in this, um, which is a surprise to see. We do see the Vegeta, which I guess you can charge the Zeno because you're playing at four, and then just be affected by that. Effective by that. Uh, one Supreme Kai, and then the rest are Bardock to draw two. Well, draw one first, and then draw two. So you get the three, three cards and drop one. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And then one Bodyguard Legic, uh, Trunks, Surge of Energy, 
which is cool because you automatically draw two and then gain five for 20k. Um, overall, cool deck. Shout out to Devin. I'm sure you want to see this one. Uh, maybe even try it out. Fu, again, one of those cards that I'm, I'm, I'm saying. This one as well as the, the Kai, which I'm surprised that more people didn't side in Kai. Um, it's a free draw and you literally just stop the game state. Uh, this deck, I don't know if I agree it needs Kai because you play a lot of one to two drops. Uh, but I guess uh, other than Trunks, this Trunks, um, and everything else is over two costs. So I guess it's not too bad. Uh, in, a, in a regular pen deck, it makes more sense. But Haruharu, uh, Mercury Tau, 4TN. I guess it's because you get to draw on it and you can play as many as you want for one cost. So that's cool. Uh, overall, very interesting deck to look at, honestly. Um, the Vegeta, the Angel of Destruction, along with the Surprise Attack uh, Frieza, probably is a really cool interaction that he did pretty much all day. Three double shots, probably in that Devon mindset to not have too many one costs in your hand. Um, and I don't think he ever, I don't think he really did have too many one costs. Um, a number of extra cards, not too many. Uh, one here, one here. Uh, this five here, and then three more, two more. Uh, so not too many, but it's it's getting up there. I guess it's just to trim the fat. All right, moving on. Here's a Janemba deck. Probably not too much to talk about for this one. Uh, I'm looking for the tech options. It's not too many. Opted in for the three te Awakening Talent pain, most likely for the uh, Hunter Mastery matchup, and just so you can get to four and not be stalled out. Uh, Hunter Mastery and as well as Victory Strike, you know that's the, those are the the real threats for this one. Uh, Janemba still doing work, you know. I don't think we should ever ignore Janemba if there's only one or two in the top 16 for this event. One event is not going to ever define a meta or a format ever, uh, forever. <laughs> and as we go into more and more regionals from now into the end of September, or well, really October until nationals, we're going to see more and more things uh, uh, pop up and as well as more deck choices. What I'm interested to see is the digging deep over here <laughs> in the side. Okay, we're, we're just we're just we're just putting aggro options in a control deck. Tight, that's tight. Um, well, I, I mean, it's cool. You know, it. You know, you get two cards, you get to Waken Faster, and you get to charge a Champa or Unbreakable, which both of those are very important. Uh, I would charge a Champa over Unbreakable any day, but maybe Tapion may have been a little bit better uh, just just as a two blue option, but I, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, Mafuba, striving to be the best, Sneak Attack, Vegeta. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Tau make, makes sense, Crisis Crusher makes sense, and then Trunks have Power Over Seeking Time which I don't know what the target for that is. Maybe another Janemba, uh, well, which doesn't make sense because you can play him from Warp with Childish. Um, I don't know. Either way, cool deck. Now, now we're talking. Thomas Henry, I think he went 6-2, 6-1. Someone correct me. But I know he is in, what, top 16, top 8. One of those. I did not see... We'll, we'll take a look at the data because uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell them from there. Toa is a new beast within the the format in which people need to figure out really quickly or else you're not going to be ready for it <laughs> and the thing to figure out is um a few things so toa of course doesn't have too much of a hand advantage uh, uh starting out until later into the game as the game progresses her hand her hand and as well as her board state become better and I think the board state is not really what you need to, um, to worry about it's the answers that she gives uh, outside or outside of that so with Toa early in the game she wants to find the pieces that uh, that uh, really help her to, to for her late game so the pieces are going to be relentless destruction Mira the the new anniversary box which has I do believe has deflect uh, banish your food to remove any kind of big threats Scientist Fu, which it's okay. You know, you don't really need Scientist Fu in this deck, I don't think. Um, and of course, Doctor Absorption Mira, which is pretty cool too, to have as another uni absorb target. But what you've seen and what this really combats is Janemba, uh, ironically, even though this is a burst leader, black leader, uh, because of all the hand destruction from Mira, uh, because of the hand destruction from the Create Absorb, uh, uh, Union Absorb, and as well as Vegeta Time Regulator that puts more cards into the deck. And if you look, at uh, the TCG player, like right now, time regulators are $40 to $50. Because of the way that we obtain 
championship packs uh, from these events. And right now, the the exclusivity and as well as the 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 uh, the way to get them is really difficult. And really, the the deck plays a lot of zero zero cost five Ks, and it's really easy just to go ahead and just you know combo out of anything. <laughs> and uh, time disruptor is always good. Uh, no escape Goku, Toki Toki, Kronoa. It really has all the answers. Like if you're looking for an answers deck, Demiko tried to do it. I think Toa does it better because of the answers that you have within um, Mira and as well as uh, Afu, and as well as that you can just awaken as early as turn one or two. Uh, which is good because now on the flip side you can now uh, choose a mirror which can be the three drop for free because you're just gonna you know you're gonna you, you're gonna have three or more into your drop at any time the dark Absor the, the Kree absorbed as it as it was it was intended and this is the most efficient way possible to use uh Kree absorbed um and, and it has double strike and critical from her second or her first effect and her second effect now has an answer to one of the the most oppressive decks not so much oppressive but most um uh, meta format <laughs> well format efficient deck that we have which is broly hom uh and as, as well as other hand mastery decks which you can just remove the uh the barrier on path to greatness and as well as just use a uh, dimension banisher fruit to get rid of it and if you if you play two minus kill zone which you can mo add more in the side you can prevent any kind of cold blast to get get rid of that and it, as well as you have mass Ain as a, another option or even time ruler uh toa which is probably my um, well, I would say Umbra Umbrail, because I think this is two or less, and then this is, uh, the uh, Umbral Invitation, is that how you say it? Yeah. Dark Overrun, uh, for four, I believe, and pay one. And then, it's really hard not to see the cards here, but, uh, you choose a three cost or less and take control of it. So, that means they have to remove it somehow or some way. Uh, so I think this is a busted effect. You just swing, activate battle, pay one. Uh, take away barrier on their battle card and then just take it from there So I think that this this deck and as well as just Toa in general has a lot of merit to it behind it It has hand destruction. It has answers to it. It has it has removal It has a lot of different things and people are wondering like oh why what is Toa, Toa doing so well? Or why is time regular doing so well? Those are the reasons why guys that this like time ruler disrupts Kigoku this disrupts uh had mastery this disrupts Janemba There's a lot of different things that come with this deck. But the answer is how do you beat it? Okay, the first thing is to understand what it does and what decks uh, uh, Are what kind, of, what kind of things are included in this deck and then go from there? <laughs> That's it. We're in the earlier earlier beginnings of of the format with Toa in it um, And we have to find out what that is if I had to take a guess it's probably just disrupts uh, the time regular time regulator because that's gonna be a huge draw factor for uh, for hand advantage um, it's early aggro uh, for espe especially critical uh, critical is really bad early aggro is not too bad because they awaken early and they'll just take cards whenever they they can as from their life and the other option is just to uh, capitalize on their misplays just for anything else maybe baby has a uh, a pretty good matchup for it uh, anything that plays Mutaito for uh, Mira is pretty good, but you still got a warp three. Um, yeah, this gets around uh, preemptive because it's a five cost, but you pay it for four. You know, it's it's pre it's pretty difficult. But to understand the deck first is is the the first option uh, or the first thing that you need to do. But going into the sideboard, dark power makes sense. Having the wizard probably perfect for the. Um, the uh, Green Broly match, Green Broly matchup, uh, Crisis Crusher for Kid Goku, uh, Haru Haru for any yellow or green deck, Chi and Shin Han, you already know, and then you already know for these two because I talked about it quite a lot. And I think uh, two more of the Time Regulator or Time Disruptor in the side is probably not too bad if you are going against more aggro matchups slash Kid Goku. Because really, uh, even for the swap deck that we that Anthony won, if you had four of these and you played it every single time, it, ha it doesn't have Deflect, which they have to wait to waste a Cold Bloodlust for. Um, but uh, at least that'll, that'll save you a turn from any swings and then as you go along into the game if they play path You can go ahead and just remove it and then do what I was saying earlier because now they don't have a cold blow uh, Or at least if they play four, they're gonna have to find the other three, you know, anyway moving on uh, I don't really want to make this too long, but it's looking like it. This is a $500 deck boys This is a Purunga uh, HOM slash victory Victory strike <laughs> What am I doing? Uh, so this one 
is uh, interesting. So, uh, you know, it's it's the flavor of the month, you know, that type of thing. Uh, I sound very old saying that, but it's 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 true. Like, li literally, it's true. Like, if you if you toss in the Heiner Mastery into Victory Strike Package to something, and you, you find something else that is um, worse than the, than the previous deck, but also better in a different area. Where this excels is that you can play the Explorer Bulma with the Ultimate Wish after you pass the Greatness and then go into Hide and Mastery and now you have an extra, uh, two extra energy in order to go into Victory Strike and as well as Battering. So you have Battering in the side and then you also have whatever else that you want to do. This guy runs the uh, Universe 7 representative which I think two or less is probably good because you know, it's, you don't want to you don't want to have too many of those. Uh, <laughs> it's just an extra card that doesn't really do anything for you other than search for your Victory Strike or uh, one of these guys. Um, two World Peace makes sense. Uh, two Power Burst, probably, probably I would drop one of these and, and add one of these. Personal Ambition to cycle through the deck. Sword Bay for Early Awakening. Whis for any of the uh, like Scuffle Time decks, uh, anything that untaps. Cool. Uh, one Crusher Ball into Striving to be the best Vegeta. Uh, pretty cool. And then Krillin for slower decks or the mirror match, maybe, uh, battering laser, etc. I think this deck probably loses to Cinder and Gogeta on the dice roll. Uh, maybe not even on the dice roll because you don't have the, the, the leader to attack. And this is really just more of a control deck that focuses on, uh, hide and mastery. I think this has a lot more opportunity than, it, than any other variant. Um, than it, than it, uh, than it should. But that's just my opinion. Let's move on. Uh, Giovanni. A lot of flack, a lot of a lot of stuff that comes with uh, with that name. But shout out to him because he did pretty well with Shinran Gogeta, Shinran Gogeta in his own variant. A lot of different tech options from answers to just just more answers. <laughs> Perunga, as I I still uh, agree with it. Uh, Energy Barrage Frieza is still something I I kind of agree with as long as you get to that. Because Shinran Gogeta, or at least Shinran in general, if you're playing objection, can get to to uh, to uh, the uh, four energy on turn three, and by that time they played Hana Mastery or Path of Greatness, that is, and you could just remove it. This is just something that chooses barrier and ignoring barrier and KO it. Uh, it's pretty good, and it's a 20, 20k double strike. I think this guy has a uh, barrier as well, so he just kind of sits there. So that's cool. Um, the modder to, to remove stuff, striving to do that in the side or the main, I mean. Uh, for more control and then just San Juan Gogeta stuff, you know, what am, what am I supposed to say to that? All right, look at that. Look like some some more some more San Juan Gogeta guys um, and <laughs> This one's more traditional build with a little bit more uh, Targets as far as the yellow kick or the yellow Goku and as well as Vegeta. I think um, this is really going for more consistency than anything. These guys are probably energy more often than not. Same thing for these guys or just a uh, union absorb targets. I think the all class Vegeta is still something that does work for any Shenron deck. Um, and then we have four or three uh, Shenron figure in Ma Majesty. I think there's a reason why people generally pick two. Then we have uh, two Whis Corrosion and then four Nimbus. It's quite a lot, so I guess he needed more yellow. Uh, I would probably drop this in order for another personal ambition, not only for more draw, but also something else to pitch for Flying Nimbus. But uh, two bad ringlings in the side, none in the main. Interesting, one Crusher Ball, Whis Mafuba, all good stuff. Even Power Burst, I guess, to get back a Kronoa uh, or a Kami if you used it or. Um, uh, use the one star ball to drop it. All right, another Shenron Gogeta. Look at that. We're, 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 what is this? Four months ago? I don't understand. Um, it's June 2019. Yep. Yes, it is. Okay, I'm just making sure I'm checking the date because we're going back in time, boys. Three Mochaito in the main, and then we have uh, two Prunga. Again, something I always agree with. Belmon for more removal, I'm guessing. Um, instead of the, uh, yeah, no, no five drop Gogeta. So I, I, he says, fuck it. You know, I don't need that <laughs> world peace so four. I don't know if that's something I agree with, but you have a lot of world peace targets, especially with the, uh, objection. And then we, of course you have two of the Shenron, uh, two more of the clan of terror. So, so these guys probably talk to each other. Um, Maybe even teammates, who knows? Uh, I always run into that and never ever notice. Two Whis for more 
uh, negates, more negates me equals more options to survive to get to your kill turn. Uh, Kami, uh, time control Kanoa, Crisis Crusher, all good stuff. Getting towards the end with Danny Hypes, Frieza, Dende deck, Trader, Trader Dende, whatever you want to call it nowadays. This one is probably similar to his list from way back when. I don't think there's too many things that are different. Food, the, the Dark Banisher is probably good against Janemba, especially if you get an Occupation and then this guy and then this guy. Now you're looking at a triple striking, clear the board, draw two cards, and then uh, warp everything in order to um, uh, make sure you, you, you swing you swing four times, five times with the leader, and you get to see their hand and hand destruction. So I mean, I, I think that really adds well to each other as far as that goes. And then we have uh, bad ringlings in the side, not in the main. We have uh, two one-star ball, which makes sense and goes with this. If you're going against aggro, you can always get both of them and then drop the other. Um, Flying Nimbus, Krillin, Ability Unleashed. Interesting that he was side that in. Has not come up at all in any of the top 16, top 32 decks that I've ever done. And I'm glad to see that there. It is an interesting card, especially in the meta that we're going into with a lot of Shenron Gogeta and a lot of Wish Leaders, especially even this one. You know, this one still counts. If you don't remember the the card does, it, it takes, I think, two or three uh, with a certain cost and puts them back in the deck. So there you go. And then Deadly Defender Frieza. Always love that card. I don't know why people don't use this with the Sun Goten in this, in, in this deck. I mean, okay, cool. Don't do it. Uh, three Dangerous Bulma, uh, Dangerous Journey Bulma. Um, uh, shout out to Josh, uh, Josh for when we were talking about this. But the Asian Wisdom Guru is cool to get that back into your uh, your deck and, and then draw you super combos. But this is a zero cost, zero, co zero cost, zero, zero K basically. But the Zanya super combo, the zero cost 10K is probably a better option. Even if you don't, even if you flip and then don't grab him back. Uh, I, I think for Dangerous Journey Bowman, if you're playing at three or four, it's probably better. Uh, so that way you put in the Zanyas because she is a three cost. And she is still a zero cost 10k. So she still is helping you early game, even if you don't see her or flipping to get her. One more Crisis Crusher, TN, Bardock for the green Broly. Let's move on into the other yellow Dende deck. Probably, if I had to, if I had to do another regional, I, I would probably just play yellow Dende. It's, it's one of those decks that has so many different options. Um, and you just can't go wrong with just looking at their hand and looking at both of these decks um there's not too many options or too many things that are too different i think the the ratios are, are the things that are really different here and as well as the sideboard um so i i would say he did have some affluence or the other way around and a lot of answers for green broly back from hell is a cool interesting tech card maybe against janemba uh, muta ito i don't think uh danny had any right yeah, Diddy didn't have any, so interesting that he did not have that. Uh, and then striving to be the best for any barrier types. I don't think he plays Crusher Ball, but he does play uh, these guys that play them into rest mode. So interesting that he does have that. So I enjoy all this. Oh, wait, there's one more. Connor Wood in the Yellow Dende. Cool, 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 cool. Okay, so this one uh, does deadly, does have Deadly Defender in the, si in the main to Banisher. Dark Banishers instead of Demigra and him. I think I agree more with Banisher and Demigra at one instead of just these guys at two. I think you, it's better to have those options than not to. If I had to take a guess, you may have not had access to Demigra. Um, and then Surprise Attack Frieza, uh, Mutaito in the side, a lot of sidecar decks that we had seen before, but mainly the same when it comes to the deck itself for some reason. And this is probably the reason Togoma is something ridiculous like $12 each now. So have fun with that. Okay, finally, now again, shout out to Scott, uh, even though I give him shit sometimes uh, <laughs> for the things he says. says he, I mean, he does a lot of different work uh, for the community and a lot of, uh, just puts a lot of, just a lot of effort into uh, the data here. And I, I really do appreciate that. Uh, if he was wondering why I, I gave him a uh, angry, angry face on Facebook, I just, I was just fucking with him. Uh, hopefully he doesn't take that wrong. Um, anyway, so <laughs> the leader breakdown is interesting to see. Uh, I, I think uh, the one ofs is probably where I want to start as far as announcer, I think this is like announcer, Hercule, and maybe even Jackie Chan are some of the, the decks that I would say like, hey, you know, 
World Martial Arts it has a lot of effect on these three decks. Maybe this will have an effect on meta on the meta, but at the same time, the World Martial Arts uh, booster packs, if they're more accessible and as well as not at the prices that, where they are because of the accessibility they have, uh, is the reason why we didn't have too much representation. And when we compare these decks to Kid Goku, Yellow Broly, and Janemba, um, and as well as Yellow Dende, and maybe even Shenron, I think the 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 options that you have compared to those uh, are are more versatile uh, than not, right? I think Hercule is great at maintaining a heart card advantage, um, but loses the victory strike. Same thing for Announcer, it just can't play any of the silver bullets. It has its own silver bullets. And then, of course, Jackie Chun is kind of a meme deck uh, in a lot of competitive different settings, even though I love him uh, to death. But we do have some Zamasu. We have one Super 17, maybe even using the 13 engine. Uh, we'll see that. Uh, Chi Lai, of course, having some representation at four. And then uh, no one, none in the top 16. I imagine there's some in the top 32. Uh, Vegeta at three. Uh, Universe 7 Frieza is a worse option than Yellow Broly for the Hunter Mastery slash Victory Strike, or at least Victory Strike in general. Then we have Lord Slug trying to regulate any of the Janembas, the 21 that we had, and 9%, but just loses to Kid Goku or a lot of different matchups that generate a lot of hand advantage and just can't handle their board. Um, and then we have the a couple Demigra, a couple Mass Saiyan, shout out to Eric, and then a couple of D set six. So uh, pretty expected when it comes to leader archetypes. When we have when we when we talk about ceiling, um, a lot of these are like attack and draw one on the front side, and then you're limited into using their backside or at least their archetype. And it just it just it's just not good when you're looking at 200 and something people, some of the top people top tier people in the in the in the country, and as well as some of these really crazy strong strategies that you have to go against and you really just can't take that 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 um that risk one wish gohan uh shout out to him one set six boo maybe an aod variant and we'll take a look at that when we come to the breakdown of success i really want to go ahead and try to organize this maybe do this here we go okay so we have three gogeta blue goku uh kid goku in the um in the top 32 Three in Janemba makes sense. Shango Gogeta makes sense. Um, and there's only one Lineage Broly versus Victory Strike? Okay. I mean, that is that is the uh, Anthony Hernandez one. And going through the, the whole list, I did not realize that he was the only Yellow Broly leader in the in the top 16. That's wild. Uh, so yeah, he was, well, am I looking at this wrong? Oh, okay, there you go. All right, so I... <laughs> I was like, what am I, what am I doing wrong? Cause I, I, I was looking at one. I was like, why is there only one yellow Broly? Okay. Now that makes more sense. So, okay, let's try this again. So in the top 32, we had, um, five yellow Broly and with one, uh, lineage Broly using, I think that's Anthony's and then just Walt Matt, um, victory strike Broly. That's, that's a lot. And then we have four trainer Gen Dende, um, blue Gogeta Kiku. So makes sense. Three to number Shenron Gogeta. Oh, wow. Uh, yellow, blue, yellow, Kid Goku. So Joey was not the only one there with one in top 16 being him. Two Barunga Victory Strike, one Victory, uh, two Victory Strike, uh, Shenron, one Toa, one Sword Slug, more Gogeta, uh, one Pan in top 32, one in, uh, T-Lai in the top 32, and then one Green Red in the top 32 Pan. Okay, that's pretty cool. Let me kind of move, remove that filter. I think if we look at this, so the percentage of wins, if we look at uh, Brody, Broly starter leader, so we have 0%. There's all 15 players didn't have more than five wins. Now that's saying something, uh, cause damn, I don't, I don't know what happened there, but damn, someone needs to explain that to me. I obviously talked a little bit about it earlier, but that is shocking. Like that is crazy. Broly starter is is damn good. Um, maybe just the 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 uh, the interaction as well as the uh, the way that he play that it, the deck is played is just too linear now. It's just easier to beat. All right, moving on. Uh, so we have uh, archetypes. So blue, blue Kid Goku in general is going to be the biggest one. Uh, he's a safe pick. He's a, it's a solid deck. If you can pilot, pilot it well, and if you play on Gogeta, it is, it is a GG th type of thing. And with that new foo, man, it's, it's crazy. Uh, but we do have uh, a lot of Herudagon. 
So if we look at Hootigan, uh, so there's only one that finished more than five wins. That is insane. Everybody else did not do that well. And I think it's because the sheer amount of Kid Goku that regenerates advantage and as well as a board after a chain attack Zeno. Uh, otherwise, it is a pretty good matchup for them. But, wow, that's interesting to see. And we have nine Trader Dende. It's just showing that looking at a hand is still not that bad uh, with 55% of them. More than 50% of them, more than half of them, did well to get more than five wins. That is saying something. I am just shocked at this data. Um, and we keep going. Uh, the red yellow champa that was actually on uh, the 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 stream looks like there was three of them. All three of them did not finish more than three or five wins. So that's interesting. Interesting. There's only one green red pan. So shout out to you. And you did have five wins in making it in that top 32. Um, uh, wow, I, is this this is just crazy. But seeing more and more data, uh, so Blue Oob, which if we look here, I do not think any of them had more than three wins. So even though Videl is damn good, only three of them having a representation uh, or low representation is not that great and you got to realize that the pilots for these guys for these decks again not shading in anybody not talking bad to anybody uh but the pilot does really matter so it, you know it's really it's really hard to say if this is is good to to say like hey blue blue Oob or videl or the new world martial arts um cards uh is not good because of this event and again that comes back to that uh again right here five of them uh, it comes back to the availability and as well as the choices against a lot of different decks and the practice and experience, etc. We have the Candy Vegeta, blue, blue green, shout out to that guy. Uh, Gogeta Hercule, that makes sense. Red Champa, uh, Broly, and Blue Ultra, Ultra Instinct. Wow, okay. Not too many uh, scuffle. As I look through, there's not really Wish Gohan, uh, Energy Boo, AOD. That makes more sense uh, with the the the, the set six blue Boo leader, but no no uh, Dende, no blue Dende. So okay, unless I'm missing it, someone can put it put it wrong. But I don't see any blue Dende. And then finally, the percentage of field. Uh, it kind of represents the, what we looked at before. A lot of Kid Goku, a lot a lot of uh, uh, Victory Strike decks, a lot of a lot of Broly. Uh, one gold, cooler golden Frieza. Now you're doing it. Now you're doing it. Uh, and then going back to the leaders in general, a lot of Kid Goku, a lot of Yellow Broly, a lot of Denimba. Um, This stuff is not very surprising as far as that goes. And I think uh, just overall, yeah. A lot of interesting data in general. So I, I again, shout out to Scott uh, for putting all this together. I know this is kind of a long video, but there's a lot to talk about as this is the first event that we, uh, that we have for... Uh, you know, with all the the new cards, and uh, let me know what you think. I'll probably put timestamps in the in the description below if you didn't see them already, so that way you can take a look at each and every deck and what I talked about. Um, uh, subscribe if you're new. Comment below what you think, and I will see you in the next one. Later.